Hello, grade four. Did you know that Philippine music, visual arts, and literature are a result of diverse influences on our musical art and literary forms through our country's many centuries of interaction with many countries. The richness of Philippine music, visual arts, and literature reflects our creativity as a people. All over the world, wherever we go, we Filipinos are well known and highly respected for our talents in music, visual arts, and literature. Here are some questions to ponder as we go through our lesson. Can you name some of the classical and contemporary Filipino musical artists? Can you recognize Philippine visual and traditional arts? And do you know any of our Filipino writers? Of the countries in Southeast Asia, Philippine music was and still is the most influenced by Western culture. This came about through more than 300 years of Spanish rule and almost 50 years of American occupation. This also explains the evolution of our musical forms and traditions. In addition to Spanish and European musical forms, Philippine music has been influenced by the old music of Asia and American-inspired semi-classical and popular music. Let us talk about the Philippine music and dances during the pre-Hispanic tradition, Spanish colonial tradition, American colonial tradition, and contemporary times. Before the coming of the Spaniards, our music was either indigenous or influenced by Islamic traditions. Indigenous music had both vocal and instrumental forms. Indigenous instruments were made of various materials, bamboo, shell, wood, vine, hair, and even animal skin. And before the coming of the Spaniards, many Filipinos in Mindanao were converted to Islam. They developed their own music, dances, visual art, and literature. Some traditional Moro musical instruments are still popular today. They include the kulintang, Kubing and gong. Among the instruments commonly used in northern Philippines are the flat gongs, bamboo buzzers, clappers, percussion troops, and brass harps. The kalalang is a nose flute used by our indigenous people in the north. In southern Philippines, they use boss gongs, ring flutes, log drums, xylophones, and single string violins. The early Filipinos danced to the ringing of bells and clanging of hollow metals. They had beautiful dances with both slow and fast steps and body movements of various styles. Some common dance steps were the kumintang, kinoton, tadek, and salampati. The Muslims had dances for wedding feasts and other special occasions too. During the Spanish time, the children of rich Filipinos were taught Western music, such as those with Spanish and European forms. These children were taught to play the piano and the violin. The orchestra band and rondalia were also introduced at this time. Some of the instruments commonly used were the piccolo, bandurria, loud, octavina, guitar, and bass. Under the Spaniards, Philippine music highlighted religious themes. A common song from during the Spanish period was the Pabasa, the chanted version of the Passion, which tells the story of the Passion of Christ. It is sung in verses during Holy Week. In the Flores de Mayo, a procession in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary, flowers are offered at the foot of the Virgin Mary statue amidst the singing of hymns. Another form of music during this era was the Cristiano Torug, Sleeping Christian, which was sung during dawn processions, held to celebrate a good harvest. 
other native musical songs and dances with strong Spanish influence were the Habanera, Balse, Mazurka, Polka, and Pandango. American teachers introduced hymns and tunes from Europe and America. They also began the singing of Philippine songs in Western style. In the University of the Philippines Conservatory of Music, Filipino composers wrote music inspired by European composers. Among these compositions were Mutya ng Pasig by Nicanor Aberlado, Madaling Araw by Francisco Santiago, and Batingaw by Antonio Molina. For example, the most popular American singers imitated by Filipino singers at that time were Tony Bennett, Vic Damone, Perry Como, and Frank Sinatra. Have you ever heard of the songs of these singers? Ask your parents or grandparents to sing you some of these old songs. During this period, popular entertainment music imitated foreign music. Until today, the foreign influence is very strong in our so-called popular music or pop music. During the early 70s, the Filipinization of popular music began. At first, Western songs were translated into Tagalog and sung by Filipino artists. Then, the Filipino artists started making original compositions. They experimented with sounds that could be called Filipino. By the late 70s, Pinoy sound was born with the creation of Filipino rock music called Pinoy rock, Filipino jazz music called Pinoy jazz, and Filipino music called Manila sound. These musical births marked the beginning of various Filipino pop styles. The Metro Manila Popular Music Festival is a songwriting competition open to both amateurs and professionals. It led to the creation of new pop songs and discovered new New artists and performers. There were other local competitions like Likha Awit Pambata, a songwriting competition on children's songs, Himig Awards, and Cecil Awards. During this period, Filipino singers, composers, and musicians formed the OPM or Organization ng Mga Pilipinong Mang Aawit to promote and support Filipino artists in the music field. OPM also means Original Filipino Music to refer to original music composed by Filipinos. The search for a Filipino identity in popular music has created a new generation of composers and singers. In the 21st century, Leia Salonga has been acclaimed a world-class singer. Leia has the artist's confidence, skills, and passion that have made her an international singer in classical, romantic, and popular music. Grand champion singers Asia Clemente and Raymond Soher were acclaimed as the world champion of performing arts. Jed Madela was the winner of the Senior Grand Champion Performer of the World in 2005. Worth mentioning too are the Filipino world-class guitarists like Michael Dadap, Florente Aguilar, and Perf De Castro. Visual art in the Philippines includes not only the fine arts, painting and sculpture, but also many traditional arts like weaving, pottery, wood carving, and metal craft done by our indigenous artists. Painting in the classical European standard was introduced to the Filipinos during the Spanish period. The earliest world-known Filipino painter was Juan Luna. Juan Luna's masterpiece, Polyarium, won a gold medal at the Madrid Exposition in 1884. Felix Resurrection Hidalgo, another Filipino, won the silver medal. 
Today, we honor our painters and sculptors with the National Artist Award, the highest award given by the Philippine government to recognize the contributions of Filipino artists. Among those on whom this award has been confirmed to were Carlos Francisco, Guillermo Tenentino, and Fernando Amorsolo. Amorsolo's works or reproduction of his works are among the most valued possessions of Filipino homes. His works have captured distinct elements of our nation's artistic and cultural heritage. His paintings have been acclaimed in the international arts community, bringing honor to the Filipino people. The Philippines was already known for its woven fibers long before the Spaniards came. The more common fibers used were pineapple, abaca, rami, and cotton. The oldest textile in the Philippines is a piece of cloth from a cave in Banton Island in Romblon. Ikat is an example of Ifugao tapestry. It is a tapis or loose lower garment woven and worn by the Cordillera people. The art of indigenous tapestry weaving is an Ifugao tradition that was revived in the 90s. Another internationally famous type of indigenous weaving is the tinalak made by the Tivoli. Their designs usually use combinations of plants, geometric figures, and figures like frogs, birds, and lizards. And the binodbodan tying technique of embedding design on thread is practiced by most of the indigenous communities in the Philippines. The technique also involves tying threads and dyeing them in a vat with colors from natural sources. Pottery is also an old art form of the Filipinos. Simple household wares like burnay, jar, palayok, clay pot, banga, clay jar, and tapayan, clay container of liquids are still produced using traditional methods. Unfortunately, very few traditional kilns are in operation today. They are found mostly in Vigan, Kalinga, Batangas, Sorsogon, Palawan, Samar, and Cotabato only. In the Philippines, the Ifugaos are well known for their skills in wood carving. The Ifugaos produce the popular bulul, a stylized representation of a human figure. Among the Muslims, the Okir in Maranao and Ukil in Tausug are famous carved products. Muslim carving is basically decorative using stylized flower and animal designs. During the Spanish colonial period, Philippine literature was written mostly in Spanish even though a few Tagalog writings were published with limited circulation. During the American occupation, Philippine literature was mostly written in English. While the setting and characters of a story may be distinguishably Filipino, the language used was still the colonizer's language. It was only in the early 50s when national recognition was given to Philippine literature. In the 1950s, the Don Carlos Palanca Memorial Awards was established to recognize the literary skill and merits of Filipino writers in both English and Filipinos. To encourage creative writing among Filipinos in the rural areas and among advocates of rural concerns, the Gantimpalang Ani was established in 1987. The award is given to peasant writers magsasaka and pro-peasant writers makamagsasaka in poetry, essay, short story, songwriting, and drama. Today, Philippine literature is widely written in Filipino and English. Today, we learned about our Philippine music, visual arts, and literature. Did you learn something today? I hope you do. If ever you have questions, feel free to message me or leave a comment on the comment section below. Thank you so much, Grade 4, and God bless you.